What is going on, everybody? Welcome into Wager Alarm. I'm Howard Bender. With me, of course, Craig Mish. And we're going to continue our NFL wins total series that we've been doing out here now for the uh, the last several days. We are on the NFC West, and this is actually our final division here, Craig. Yeah. I'm going to miss you, buddy. Might have to do some, uh, some player props uh, in the coming future. How about that one? Well, it's great to be back and great to be doing streams again with you here at, at Wager Alarm and Fantasy Alarm. Really enjoy it. One of my favorite things to do every football season. And yeah, we've covered every team. You can go over to wageralarm.com or go on the YouTube page and see all of our previews. And rather than doing them in an hour or two, we kind of limited them to 10, 15 minutes per division. And you're right. Today, we're going to look at the NFC West and this Potentially, I think Howard has a chance to be the best division in the NFL. I don't. It's probably an easy statement to make, but it looks like the best division in the NFL. <laughs> we've we've done some really bad divisions, right? It's surprising sometimes when you think about it, right? The NFC has been really like you know. I mean, you look at the East and you're like, yeah, and you got the the North and you're like, mm, and then the South, yeah. So all right, well let's uh, let's kick it off here in Arizona. Uh, everybody's hoping that Kyler Murray takes that next step forward. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury, uh, another year here with the, uh, the air raid offense. Fandle's got the number at eight right now. And, you know, I mean, for me, you know, like you said, this will be an exciting division. I also think this is probably the toughest division. Definitely. So when you're talking about playing each team twice, you know, I mean, what do you, do you look at the, at Arizona's schedule and say, well, they'll split with the Niners, they'll split with the Seahawks, and they'll split with the Rams, and uh, and then you have to go with their uh, their out of conference schedule and their out of division schedule there. Yeah, th- this is the only team that I feel 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 pretty emphatically on the under. I, I think the rest of the teams okay. in the division have have a really good shot to all make the playoffs. That's three teams there. Uh, look, Arizona, as you mentioned, their number is eight. And and honestly, I think they're going to get beat down by some of these other teams. Why? I think the coaching is really good in this division. I think there are better coaches than uh, Cliff Kingsbury in Arizona. And I think that this he is going to be on the hot seat and gone, Howard. I think that they're going to take a step back this season. I'm not a fan of the way that they've run the offense. It seemed to be some very questionable calls down the stretch last year. I'm not even sure they should have been playing Kyler Murray last year. Uh, I see their number is eight. I'm going to give a very heavy lean under. I think they're probably a five or six win team this season. And and again, they, they're they going to get, I think they're going to get beat down by the Rams. I think they're going to get beat down by the 49ers. And Seattle maybe is just a step above them, but uh, the coaching is better in Seattle too. And, and to me, of all the teams that we're going to talk about, yes, we talked about Denver and their coaching, and I think that it's poor, but my team in the NFC with the poor is uh, without a doubt, it, it is Arizona. Yeah, I haven't been a fan of Kingsbury at all either. I thought he um, he just got hyped up for all the wrong reasons, right? Like, weren't they? They were like he was responsible for Patrick Mahomes. No, right? I mean, that wasn't you know that wasn't wasn't it for me. So I'm with you on that one there. I like the lean on the under. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the Rams. So interesting here, uh, coordinator, uh, offensive coordinator, passing game coordinator Shane Waldron. Uh, he's gone. He's actually now um, with uh, with Seattle, actually. He is. He just went over to Seattle. So here we go, Sean McVay's offense. The big move, obviously, is the new quarterback, and it's Matthew Stafford, who, uh, you know, significant upgrade for me to Jared Goff. He's got weapons in Cup and Robert Woods. He's got a pass-catching tight end. They lost Cam Akers, but... They seem to be pretty confident going forward right now with Daryl Henderson. They haven't made that move to grab any kind of a veteran, which I think is fine because all the veterans who are sitting there waiting to get signed all suck, and none of them would make any kind of an impact there. Uh, But the number here is 10.5, and the the juice on the under is at minus 140. Yeah, uh, and you can get some tens. I'm I'm going to lean over on the Rams, and and I and I think that they win. I, I'm sorry, I think that they finish second in the division behind San Francisco. I'm going to pick them to win the division. Wow. They they to me they have the best defense in the NFL. 
and the Stafford upgrade is just massive. And and they won a lot of games last year without having a decent running game. Remember, Acres did not run until what the, like the last five games of the season. And and I and by the way, Howard, I think they are going to bring in a running back. I think it's like Frank Gore, you know, like somebody like that, a veteran, just to kind of babysit. But why? I could, like, I mean, that's see that I don't understand. You know, I get yeah, you know, it. Happens. Like, it happens. Oh, it happens. It happens. So end. gross. Yeah. So gross. I'm a big Frank Gore fan, but yeah, no. Um, but anyway, I like Frank Gore, ten years ago. I understand that. But yeah, but maybe somebody that wouldn't play. Like, if it was Adrian Peterson, Frank, I wouldn't worry oh, about Henderson's oh, playing God, time. But I, no. I still. I, Howard, I think that's still going to happen. I, I don't think that there – maybe I'll be wrong about that one, but uh, it, I don't think that that factors in at all to this. Great wide receiving core. I think Van Jefferson is yes. going to take a leap this year, and McVay is a great coach, and I don't care that his his coordinator left. So I, I'm going to go over on the Rams and get little plus money, and I got them winning 11 games. All right. Well, now, now we got to move to the team that you think is finishing first. Uh, and that is the uh, the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, you know, we, we you know a little bit of a, a quarterback controversy here. Although I still think Jimmy Garoppolo holds the job for the majority of the season. Um, you know, very sim- same personnel here, right? Now you've got a healthy George Kittle. Debo Samuel is healthy. You've got uh, Brandon Ayuk, um, Raheem Mostert and, and Trey Sermon. There's like a hodgepodge that's in the backfield there. Defensively a solid team, always, but I mean, the defense losing its heart and soul and Robert Saleh, you know, does it play the same? It's a, it's a fair question, and that's the only thing that I think factors into this is losing the defensive coordinator, but you have to assume that they have somebody capable there that can replace him. Here's what's playing in the in uh, you know a few positive factors for San Francisco on that total. Uh, here are here are some of their games outside of the division, and and of course we know the division is tough, right? <laughs> Detroit, ooh, Houston, nice, Atlanta, jackpot. And we I know we like Jacksonville, but Jacksonville and Jacksonville, by the way, is going to have to travel. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the 49ers are going to have to travel to Jacksonville. I think that game is actually there. Uh, on top of that, worst team in turnover margin in the NFC. In 2020, San Francisco 49ers, and they still won a lot of games last year. Why? Because of Jimmy Garoppolo. So here's what's going to happen. Trey Lance is going to play, and he's going to play Howard in the first game of the season. Really? Trey Lance is here to stay. I am not, just because I don't know the player, and I did not see the player play in college, I am not going to fall victim to this again. I did this with Josh Allen. And it's it's not that I said Josh Allen was going to be bad. I just never saw him. I didn't know anything about him. Uh, 49ers are a very well-run offense. They're a very well-coached team. And they just put their president of football operations in the Hall of Fame in John Lynch. I think the 49ers are going to win the NFC. And I think they're going to go over their total. I really, I really think they're going to be good this year. And I think Trey Lance has a chance to be a star. I am buying the things that they're saying there. All right. Wow. Wow, nauseating for those of us living in the Bay Area and not <laughs> 49ers fans. But what are you going to do? I think All right, gonna wrap it up then with uh, with the Seattle Seahawks, which you know, I you know I saw the ten wins for Seattle. I actually like the over on this one. I like Pete Carroll turning the reins over to Shane Waldron. They're going to go to a much more uh, West Coast style passing offense. They've been running that Air Coriel system. That that you know, gum chomp and Pete Carroll insists on doing, uh, which you know just wasn't really you know gelling. You know when when it's West Coast offense and you got the quick passes, the short passes, the dink and dunk as they say to help move the chains. Air Coriel, what you've got is it's timing route. So the quarterback's not even throwing to the receiver; he's throwing to a spot on the field, expecting his receiver to be there. Right now, the word out of camp is that everybody is loving the switch here. And uh, and you've got DK Metcalf, uh, Tyler Lockett, um, even Freddie Swaim, who has been uh, getting some extra camp time here with, uh, with Dwayne Eskridge, uh, all banged up. You've got Chris Carson. Who knows what happens with Rashad Penny? But the big thing is, is that they're going to increase the amount of RPO work they do, which means they're going to let Russ run a little bit more also. 
Yeah, so, I mean, I, I understand all the things that you're saying about Seattle, but the reason why I, I kind of call BS a little bit on these things is is because what did they need to change? The first eight games of the season, Russell Wilson was the favorite to win the NFL MVP, and DK Metcalf was the best receiver in the NFL, and then it just stopped. Like, it just stopped. What 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 did they do in that first half that wasn't so good? They were winning every game, and it's like they quit. I, I, I did get it. Um if I had to go one way or the other on this, I would lean over with you. But I'm not completely sold that Pete Carroll is not going to want to run the ball. And, and you know, that whole thing with let Russ cook. Like, I just don't think that they do that enough. I think I think Wilson is at the top as far as talent in the NFL. One, two, three. I mean, you call it. But, again, October, this guy is the favorite to win the NFL MVP. And then you just stop letting him throw. And you just keep handing the ball off. This dude is throwing bombs to DK Metcalf and Lockett all over the field. I can't figure out what happened to them in the second half of the season, but certainly in a 17-game season, you're telling me they can't go 11-6? and six? That that seems very probable, so I will lean with you there, but that does mean we have three teams winning more than 10 games in that division, and if that happens, I think Arizona's only going to win a handful. So uh, <laughs> th- th- this is the only one of the four that I don't really feel great about because I could see it, Howard, landing right on that number. I could see yeah, that okay. end right there. But if I had to go one way or the other, it would be the over because I want to believe that they're going to let Wilson do his thing all season long. Very perplexing for me. And, of course, I play fantasy. I had Wilson. I had Metcalf. I'm thinking I'm winning the Super Bowl. And then Russell Wilson's throwing for 150 yards for, like, five games in a row. Like, what in the world's going on here? Yeah, that listen, that would be – I mean, listen, it's not beyond the uh, the realm of possibility. You think about, you know, an 11-win season, 11-6 and six for the Rams, 11-6 and six for the, the 49ers. There's, you know, whatever the tiebreaker is there. And then you've got a 10-7, a, a and seven, uh, you know, Seattle team in there. And, and all three could end up making the playoffs uh, with that kind of a record. That's, right. yeah, you, you almost feel bad for the Cardinals. Yeah, and I and I, by the way, I think San Francisco is going to win thirteen or fourteen games. I do. I, I like them. I like them a lot. So, yeah, I, I, really I, but do. but if I like them, it does mean that the the Cardinals have to get beat down a little bit. And I and I would anticipate that. I mean, okay. wh- where do you put Cl- Cliff Kingsbury in terms of coaching amongst these other coaches? Oh, that- easily last. Right. And, easily and that, last. That's a big part of it. And 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 again, another team. I guess if any team loses their quarterback, they're they're done. And I mentioned Minnesota in a previous one that we did with the whole, you know, Kirk Cousins thing. But that's mm-hmm. another team, too, that it's like everything runs through that guy. Everything runs through Lamar Jackson. And, and two years in a row, Kyler Murray's been hurt, too. Let's not forget that. So, anyway, that's my opinion. Of that. That's all right. Well, I like it. And there you have it. Uh, we've completed the series here. NFL wins totals. Check it out. WagerAlarm.com. Uh, you can also hit our YouTube page. We've got all of these uh, nice quick watches for everybody, right? 10 to 15 minutes, catch a division, catch our leans, make yourself a little list, and uh, and go have some fun with that. Uh, big thank you to Matt Sells, our producer, for always doing such a great job for, uh, for myself and Craig. For Craig Mish, I'm Howard Bender. We'll catch you next time.